Hey everybody! So uh, I'm gonna start doing some rewatch videos where I go back and rewatch some stuff I had seen before, and it's time to rewatch them to recap and refresh my memory. Uh, so we're gonna do this for Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, we just saw the season six finale of Walking Dead, and this next Sunday we're going to get season two premiere of Fear the Walking Dead. So let me go ahead and tell you this one is not like my normal reaction stuff. This there will be spoilers all the way through because I have seen the entire first season. Um, so we're going to do episodes one through three in here tonight. And obviously there's not commercial breaks, so it's not really a reaction. Uh, I'm going to come back between after each episode and just kind of give some thoughts on what I think now versus what I can remember thinking then. And, uh, you know, just theorize about some cool stuff we might get season uh, season two because season two looks a lot cooler. And like I said, there's going to be spoilers from here on. So if you don't want spoilers, turn this off because uh, I'm going to start here in just a second. Okay, uh, yeah, so... You know, I remember the first episode being really boring and really unlikable. I didn't like it at all. I remember liking stuff as it got went along, and by the end, it got really good. Uh, but it was, I thought it was a really slow season. I don't remember them sticking to the promise of what they actually said they were going to do, like show how the outbreak began and everything. And they, they really, they jump over it. They're like, oh, nine days later, after all the shit happened, and we've, you know, set up this military camp in the neighborhood... But, you know, I mean, then again, I had expectations. I was watching week to week. We had the commercial breaks. So usually when you grab it grab it on Blu-ray or, you know, watch it on streaming or whatever without interruptions and you can kind of binge it, it, it gets a lot more enjoyable. So in this video, we're going to do the first three episodes of six. And uh, I'm trying to get both these out this week before we do my uh, reaction and review video for the season two premiere. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little excited. I'm, 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 I'm dreading having to watch this first episode because, like I said, I remember not liking it much. But now with context, I might like it a lot more. So I guess uh, in 45 minutes, I'll find out. And it should just be a split second for you guys. And I'll see you then. <laughs> okay, so the first episode, I didn't remember it being extended. So without commercials, it's 60 hours. must have been a 90-minute premiere. Um, it's, it's a lot better the second time around, kind of since I already know the characters and I know where they're going. And without the expectations of, you know, knowing there's no real zombie thing until the, you know, except for the beginning and the end, it's a lot more enjoyable. It's, a it's far more intricate in terms of the character arcs and developments that they're going through. I'm picking up a lot of stuff I had not picked up before. Uh, if I recall, maybe it's revealed the mom had trouble with drugs before or something, because, you know, that's kind of in there. Uh, the stuff with Travis and Nick is much more interesting, especially Nick being worried about going crazy. That played a lot better for me this time. I still have some issues in terms of, you know, how so much cell footage of the police shootout thing got around. But I guess, you know, if everybody's scrambling trying to figure out what's going on, that a lot of this stuff may slip through the cracks in this moment in time. Of course, Tobias is still interesting. I'm anxious to kind of replay what happens with him in the next episode. You know, the kid with a stabby stabby to school. And, uh, um... And, you know, and then again, there's some things that are effective, but are sound design things, like when the principal's listening in to evaluate the teachers, she would clearly hear the speaker, but we don't. But I don't know that that really matters. But, um, you know, it was much cooler. Uh, the, the daughter, I remember the first time watching it, and I remember a lot of other people saying this online as well, the daughter and Nick, you know, they, their initial reaction, uh, interaction in the hospital with the, with the jello and everything initially seemed kind of sexual and we were all like that's kind of creepy since they're supposed to be brother and sister I, I, I didn't feel that was there at all this time so maybe it's something just about seeing them the first time or something I don't know but uh yeah I mean it's still a little slow because it's a little long I'm not sure that needed to be 60 they probably could have pushed that into 45 but considering this was absolutely a character nuance piece more than a zombie piece by any means um perhaps that's what they needed but uh yeah and you know good atmospherics good music and uh, I think, again, with tempered expectations, it was a far better episode because I remember just really being disappointed in it when it first aired. But, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into uh, the second episode here. And I think uh, this is the one where maybe some of the shit really starts to hit the fan by the end, if I recall. I don't know if it's the second episode or the third episode where they end up locked in uh, with, with the Hispanic family. Uh, and I can't remember the names yet. Of course, I'm refreshing as I go along. But, uh, it, you know, it, it's better. So uh, I'm enjoying it. And again... Knowing the fates of the characters, like uh, the ex-wife, you know, it, she was more interesting in the brief scene she had. So I definitely think, uh, no surprise, the rewatch so far is a vast improvement for me. So let's see what we think with episode two. <laughs> so yeah, episode two is really cool. Uh, it's a lot cooler. Um, but you know, I, got, I do have to point this out, and I've heard other people say this, and it's very much true. Uh, well, my girlfriend, well, my fiance, uh, always gives me crap for, like, saying everything and talking all the time and over-explaining. <laughs> I mean, not really, but a little bit, you know. Uh, she gives me the crap, I mean. I do do that a lot. Uh, but, you know, it's probably because I've watched so many shows and movies like this where 
so many lives could be saved, so many problems could be solved. People just clearly explained to each other what they've seen, what they've been through, what's going on. Uh, case in point, the end of this episode with the neighbor lady throwing the party and, and the other neighbor that was sick attacking her. If they had told the daughter what was going on, she might have been able to be like, hey, uh, this is going to go bad. Why don't we warn someone or yell or distract or do something? I know it's a little nitpicky, but... You know, it happens. It's a little bothersome. Um, and, you know, even like when uh, the dad uh, is going over to pick up his son and ex-wife and, you know, she's all like, it's not your visitation. We agreed you wouldn't visit, blah, blah, blah. It's like, just say, dude, shit's going on. I'm not coming just for him. I'm coming for you. We all have to get out of here. You know, and I know she wasn't really hearing it, but he wasn't even trying to say it. So, but, you know, I mean, look, it's early in the season. I'm sure the writing will get tighter as they figure it out. Um, it's a faster paced episode. I'm still really bothered. It always bothered me like Tobias and, and, and mom end up at the school and they get all this food and everything and they kill the one thing and they don't take any of it with them. Not a bit of it. I mean like after that moment, I might have been like, you know what? Uh, yeah, let's go back and get the rest of that shit because this stuff's going to get bad. Uh, but I do really love her having to kill the principal. I think the way that was done is very emotional but also explains to her how this works and how brutal it's going to be and how you have to stop them completely to stop them. You know, I think it really showed what she's going to have to deal with. I wouldn't be surprised if in some future episode they reveal her past is so rough that she's perhaps even taken a life. I don't think they do that. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Um, the Salazars, I think, uh, you know, Ophelia and the dad and, and I'm, you know, I'm getting the names as we go again. It's cool to see them again. Oh, um, and I wonder, because I don't think they ever played this out in this season, so I'm glad as a reminder uh, that the, as, as uh, the dad, <sighs> totally blanking on the names and I already learned it. I want to say Chris, but that's the son. Anyways, um, you know, he, is it? Maybe that's not the son, uh, whatever. The dad, uh, as he's driving to get his son and wife, he sees the cop in the parking lot loading all the water and we see 13 on the car. So I wonder if that'll still ever play out in the future, even though since we know where the seasons, you know, ends and where we're going to be next season, I don't know. I guess that could, but we'll see. Um, and, you know, I might have been bothered by in the future if they do play that out. Like, he never saw the 13, how would he know? But I guess that's for us as the audience. He would have seen some identifier, but, you know, that, that's getting really specific. Uh, let's see. I like. I really like the choice. I think this is one of the things that'll make the season interesting. That they'll continue as long as they don't overdo it. Of of Nick and you know the junkie and trying to trying to wean him off and what's going to happen without medication. I think that's a fascinating thing in an apocalypse scenario that's not really been this thoroughly explored by anything I'm aware of. Um, and of course, all the rioting stuff has started. It seems a little corny, but okay. But then again, I think it's like, well, the cops, they have more information than they're telling the public. Because, you know, like in the first episode, and they called back to it, Tobias did, and this one about, is that the same they that's supposed to warn us? It's like, if somebody says, the government will warn us, it's like, you got to understand the way they work. They're not going to tell you anything until they have some understanding of what they want to tell you. You know, I mean, that's just, they don't want to start panics and stuff. So if this is happening as rapidly as it's happening, they have no understanding of what's going on yet either. So of course they're not going to tell you. Uh, but obviously I think uh, the mom has figured that out. Um, will we see Tobias again more than this? I recall him not being in any more episodes. So I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, hopefully he'll show back up somewhere in season two or something. Because I would like to know more about him and what happened. Because I like the idea that this kid's a bit of a survivalist. And he's the kind of one of the most realist characters in the show. Like he feels like a real person that you'd really meet in real life, you know. Uh, maybe it's because they let him have acne and all that. I don't know. It's, But uh, yeah, so very cool. Very cool. So uh, we're going to do one more. So uh, episode three. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So yeah, this is pretty much I think the end of all the beginning of everything. I think episode four is where we jump ahead. So this should be this should be pretty cool. I remember... A little bit of the escape from the riots. I don't remember much else about season four uh, or episode three. I mean, I don't even know where I got season four. I guess I'm thinking episode four. But anyways, I don't remember much more. So let's go do it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So episode three is like the really good for like the first really good episode of season one. Uh, you get the whole escape through the crowd and some good, you know, a little taste of zombie action there. Uh, the beauty of seeing the cities, all the power grids going down and all that. That was really cool. Uh, the juxtaposition of them running through the riots and the other group staying at home playing Monopoly. Like, that was all really cool stuff. Um, yeah, I love, you know, the, 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 well, we haven't gotten to that. Let me not say, well, I mean, you know, I remember a little bit. The neighbors behind the house, the, the woman and the husband coming home. That's kind of how we end. Uh, I mean, that's a little bit of a stretch, but I can kind of go with it that, you know, she came back to stop the husband from going in and dying. And then the military shows up, and that's really cool. 
Um, again, these first three episodes are really actually a really good look at like how the outbreak occurs, you know, and how it starts, and it's pretty linear, and I love that. It's a shame they jump ahead after this. Um, but it's neat to see like kind of the military camp, you know, we've seen Walking Dead, we've seen a lot of camps of people who have been driven crazy to various extent, which they kind of have to be to make those kind of camps survive initially. But it's neat to see the calm control military thing. And of course, we're going to get more of that in the next bit. Um, yeah, again, I mean, again, you, you, Nick is like a really great rounded character because at times you just love him, at times you just hate him. Like, I like that he's like the voice of reason, like tell Alicia what's going on and he finally tells her and all that. It's like, you know, I mean, that's going to make things safer. Uh, Daniel Salazar, of course, is fantastic and I can't wait to see more of him. Uh, yeah, I mean, this was a really good one. This is like the really good one that just really moves forward. But, uh, you know, I've had a good time kind of rewatching these three. I'm looking, oh, but you know, before I get to it, yeah, that's one other thing. Um, uh, the plane. There's the Walking Dead, that little web series thing they did, and they kind of were showing things during commercials. I try not to watch too much of that. I try not to pay too too close attention to that because in those tiny chunks, I can't watch it. I need to watch it in a you know more longer form. So you're probably getting a video of that hopefully before Sunday of me checking that out, reaction review kind of thing, because uh, uh, it does tie in. Because at the end of episode three, you see the plane, and and you know I heard they teased that hey, find out what happens in season two. So I'm like okay. I need to go watch this, so um, that'll be really neat. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, again, you know, it's slow start. Second episode gets a little better. Third episode is a great episode. Shame they kind of reset, but we'll get to that. So I mean, you know, are you guys rewatching? What do you think? Is, have any of your opinions changed when you know now that you've seen it again? You getting excited for season two? Let's talk about it down in the comments. If you like this video, give me that thumbs up because it's really cool. I like it. I'm a happy guy. I'm having a great time right now. Recently engaged. My birthday is on Wednesday, so I don't know if that's before or after this video, the sixth. But hey, yeah, um, <laughs> just having a great time. April is going to be a great month and I can't wait to see uh, the next three episodes and then how this season is going to start. But uh, if you really like this and you want more, I'm putting out stuff every day and you can inspire me to do even bigger, better things if you just hit that subscribe button, man, because it's going to be a fun ride and I want to go on it with you. So uh, I guess until the next one, I will say later.